2019 uh, over the Yeet Sunday. The reason I believe that is because I truly believe one of the ways that the church fails is that we don't invest enough in young people. I think a lot of young people, uh, we think that they can't either understand the things of God and also think that religion in and of itself has an old spirit. I think when people practice religion, they get caught up in a lot of old, dead things that really don't work and they really don't make a difference. So I just want all the youth here to know that you guys are the most important members in this church. You You guys are the most important members in this church. You guys are really the ones that God is after. God is after you guys more than he's after me. Because he looks at me and says, well, Pastor, you already 62 years old. Anything I could have did for you, it's been done already. <laughs> but you guys, man, you guys are future ahead of you. You got gifts and talents. You guys are going to have families and children of your own. You're going to have careers. And if God can grab hold of your life in a real way, you will be the people that will be running ministry and running church and growing the church and so on and so forth. So I want you guys to understand something today as we get ready to enter into this new year, hallelujah, that the new year is really something that represents your future so much more than anything else. God is going to do some awesome things in you guys. He's going to do some awesome things in you guys when you're in school, as you get older, as you become adolescents in God's economy. And that's why a lot of people across the world end up sick, they end up suicidal, they end up addicted to drugs. Hallelujah. Because you have to understand why God wants to bless you. Why God wants to heal you and save you and use you. And it doesn't matter what industry you're in. Danielle is an actress. She's going to be on TV starting in, in, in January. God wants to use her in that area. Some of you are teachers and educators. God wants to use you in that area. Don't ever think that you're just where you are just because you're just supposed to be there to get a paycheck. That's, that's living a purposeless life. You're not living a purposeless life. God has a plan for your life, and it ain't just to get money. I'm, let me tell you something about this stuff. You'll never be satisfied no matter how much you get. It's temporal. I don't care. I, I saw Floyd Mayweather. He 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 was, had money stacked on his bed, talking about it was two million dollars in cash on his bed, and uh, and then took went to his garage. He had four Maybachs. Maybachs are cars and guns. It was like sixteen million dollars worth of cars. Who cares? You still ain't satisfied. You still tell up. So it's not really about that. God gives you this in blessings and increase. So that he said, so that you could establish his covenant in the earth. Now that's for the believer. That's for you guys. Amen? Amen. So that's what a gift does. But let me ask you something about a gift. How many, how, well, let us see a show of hands. Who got shoes for Christmas this year? Raise your hand. Ooh, Lord Jesus. <laughs> okay, so how about socks? You got socks. How about pants? How about shirts? How about underwear? If you got underwear, raise your hand. I got some underwear. <laughs> now let me ask you something. Were they old? No. In other words, was the underwear you got old? Hand-me-down underwear? <laughs> you're right. Y'all need to do something about it. You got old underwear, you right? <laughs> Who's about that? Yes, was Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> How many of y'all got old socks with holes in them? Oh. Hold, holy socks still had a little musty feet smell on them. You did, Ken? You got old socks? No. No, no. For Christmas. When you opened your gift, you had old socks. Great hands. If you had. How about worn out shoes? You got, when you opened your gifts on your Christmas tree, your shoes, you had shoes, but they had holes in them. No. Because the nature of God's gift. Now, there are some things old that I want. I want my money to be old. I want my wine to be old. 
And I want my Rolex and my jewelry to be old. Yeah. Yeah. But everything else, I want new. Yeah. And that's the nature of a gift. That it is new. Yeah. It is something you have never seen before. It is something you have never had before. It is fresh. Yeah. Say that with me, kid. Say it's fresh. Y'all still say that? I don't know. We used to say fresh. <laughs> Y'all might not even know what I'm talking about. It was new, right? Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. So that's the nature of a gift. So as a believer, if we receive God's gift, there has to be newness attached to our lives. It can't be this old, dead, worn out, holy shoe spirit. It has to be, man, look at these new kicks I got. Man, look at this new thing God done did for us. Oh, look at this new thing God is doing in my life and in my ministry. Amen. In Jesus' name. Turn with me to Hebrews chapter uh, 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 10 real quick. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 9. Hallelujah. Let, let me tell you, man, how to really get blessed by God. It says, I'm sorry, verse nine, uh, uh, 9, Hebrews, is it 9, verse 10? Or is it 10 verse 9? It must be 9 verse 10. No, no. Uh, try 19. Try 10 and 19. Okay. So, we're getting ready to enter into 2020, right? Mm -hmm. So the Bible says, Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter, to get in to the holiest by the blood of Jesus. But then look what it says, how you got to get in. By a what? No. A new and living way. So there's some things you never are going to be able to get into that God has for you unless you operate in a newness. In a new spirit. Turn to Romans chapter 7 real quick. Romans chapter 7. Hallelujah. Jesus said. And this, this is what God, hallelujah, wants from us. And the reason he gave us this love gift. Romans 7 and 6 says this. But now we are, have been delivered from religion or the law that being dead because it killed us. That's what religion will do. It will kill you. Trying to keep rules you can't keep. Amen. Trying to act like something you're not. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Being dead wherein you were held that we should serve God. And how should we serve God? Newness in a new spirit. spirit. And not in an old religious way. So in other words, God said, that's why I believe children are so important. The Bible says out of the babe, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, praise is perfected. It's out of the new, when we can get the new kids on the, in the church, the young kids, the fresh kids to serve God, to praise God, to celebrate God. That's when power is present in Jesus' name. Because the Bible says that which is old is decaying and ready to fade away. So God said, I need you to serve me in a new spirit. See, the problem sometimes with the church is that we try to serve God, but it's in that old, dead, religious spirit. And it's not going to be effective. It's not going to produce anything. Amen? Look at one more with me. Look at Isaiah chapter 43, verse 19. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 19. Hallelujah. Behold, I will do a new thing. This is God talking. Now I shall spring forth, shall you not know it. I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. So this is God saying, I'm going to do a new thing. So let me ask you this. If God is going to do a new thing and you're not in a new spirit or operating in a new spirit, will you be able to receive it? No. Of course not. So in order to get what God has for you, you have to operate in newness. Your relationship with God has to be fresh. Amen. It has to be new. It has to be inspiring. And that, listen, no one can do that for you. You have to do that. That's something that you have to commit your life to say, I'm going to keep my relationship with God fresh. Amen. I'm going to keep my relationship with God new. 
How do I do that? I remember what he's done for me. Remember when God first saved you? When he first delivered you? Remember when you first had an experience? Let me ask you children over here. Have you ever been in church and maybe a song is singing or maybe pastor's preaching and maybe your parents are by and you feel your parents really feeling the spirit of the Lord? They may be rejoicing or they may be shouting or they may be crying. Has it ever affected you? You have to remember that. That's that's your initial experience with God. You have to keep that, you have to bring that to remembrance in your life so that you can keep your relationship with God new. Because if you don't, it will get old just like anything else. And when God says, I want to do something in your life you've never seen before. So I want to talk to you real quick, just some real quick principles about how to operate in newness. Turn back to Mark chapter 2. How to Walk in newness. What causes us as a church and as a people to walk in, in newness? So it says here, hallelujah, Mark chapter 2, verse 1. And again he entered into Capernaum in some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. Say this with me. If you want to enter, want to enter into, the thing, into the new thing, God asked for you, look at your neighbor and say, you got to make some noise about Jesus. Talk to, think of somebody said, you got to talk about what he's doing. Say so you got to shout about what he's doing. You got to let people know that God is my healer, my deliverer. He's doing a new thing in my life in Jesus' name. See, if you want to keep it fresh, if you want to keep it new, there has to be some noise made. God operates through noise. God cannot operate in your life if you ain't making no noise. If you ain't making no noise at your house or on your job or with your friends, if you're not telling your friends that I believe in Jesus, I believe in God's love and God's power, God really can't operate in your life. The Bible says when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all in one place on one accord, and the first thing they heard was some noise. They heard the sound of a mighty rushing wind. What's the Bible say? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You can't hear nothing that ain't nothing being said. Amen? Touch your neighbor and say, you better start making some noise in your house. Hallelujah. You better start talking about God's healing power, his love power, if you want to keep it fresh and new in Jesus' name. The reason some people never get that spirit of excitement for God, it ain't noisy enough. I don't care where you go. If you watch a football game or a basketball game, people are there, and the one thing that you can say, they are making noise. And because they're making noise, it causes the environment to shift. You cannot have your life change if you won't open your mouth and tell people how good God been to you. If you won't tell people that Jesus is my healer, Jesus is my parents delivered, Jesus is the reason my family is blessed, it ain't going to happen. You got to make some noise. Go to the next verse. And straightway many people got together. That's why I said when we start making noise, that's when people will start gathering together. Amen. Now, I don't know about you. I'm glad y'all here. But I would be more excited to preach to this group than to a group of two folks. If I was here and there was only two people here, I wouldn't be very excited. Now, I'm not saying that because we're not a mega church, God can't operate. But what I am saying is this, that when we start making enough noise so that other people start gathering, it does create more excitement. Amen. Come on, praise. Sing. When you up here singing and you up here praising the Lord, and all of a sudden you see hallelujah, a crowd of people you ain't never seen walking here, you know good and well you start singing and under more, more of a, an anointing and more excitement. I know, I know I'm telling the truth. Hallelujah. I'm the same way preaching. Amen. I love y'all, but I see y'all all the time. Hallelujah. And I want to keep seeing you. I'm not saying I don't want to keep seeing you, but if you want to see a brother get excited, then there has to be more people gathered together. And the Bible says it was so many people that there was no room to receive it. Touch somebody and said, we got to have a faith where there's no more room 
in this place. Amen. Hallelujah. We, we got to have a faith that says God is going to fill this place where, hallelujah, there ain't going to be no more room in here in Jesus' name. That's how you keep things new and exciting. Are y'all following? And it's only going to happen when people open their mouths. And now, when it says noise, it just means they was telling people Jesus was in the house. Yeah. Go back to verse 1. Amen. And get in there and it was noise. That just means they were telling people that he was in the house. Such as I say, he was in the house. Power is in the house. Deliverance is in the house. Miracles is in the house. Change is in the house. New beginnings is in the house. Amen. Amen. And because of that, go to verse 2. All kinds of people showed up, one room received even by the door, and he preached the word to them. Now, now this is my opinion. The one thing people in the church don't get excited over more than anything in 2020 is the word. The Bible says in the last days, because they have itching ears. They gonna he teaches them to themselves because they have vision years and they gonna give heed to fairy tales and fables. They ain't gonna hear no word. I said that church I visited two weeks ago it was a good church. It was fast, but the one thing I saw there was no emphasis on the word. I mean, the message was very like very homogenized. It was sterile. There wasn't no substance to it. Now I saw a whole lot of things like I didn't tell y'all when I went to that church and visited. I had like seven people come up to me and greet me. How you doing? How you doing? It's your first time here? They just, that's what they did. There are times we have guests, I have to chase them out the door because I want them leaving. Ain't nobody said that to me. <laughs> hey, thanks for coming. See, that, that kind of, that, you know, but that, I want to say this to say this. Say this with me. Don't think. Don't think. Don't think. Just because, Just because God is doing something new, doing something he done threw away everything old. Matter of fact, there's some stuff from 2019 you need to take into 2020. But what we have a tendency to do, we either get stuck in the old or we move on to the new and we want to throw away everything old. And I'm 62 years old, but y'all still need me. <laughs> Let's just get it right. You still need me. Oh, I'm, 60, I'm speaking prophetically. Amen. I was 23rd, I'll be 62. Amen. Ain't in them but another to be anyway. But, but uh, yeah. But uh, but 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 that's what you need to understand. He preached the word to them. See, a, lot of, a lot of people want to go to church, but when they come to it, they don't hear the word. So look at your neighbor and say, you still need the word. Still need the word. So look at your neighbor and say, you ain't such a new age believer that now the word ain't important in your life. You still need the word, amen? Y'all got all your little, you got all your little word apps. How many of y'all got your word app on your phone, amen? Hallelujah. You got that word app on your phone. You just get that word whenever you need it. Hallelujah. But guess where I got the word? I got the word in my heart. And in my mouth. Right. Hallelujah. It's written on my heart. I don't need a word out. I can quote it. Amen. I done said it. Y'all got your little playlist. Oh, yeah. your, little, your, your, little, your little gospel playlist. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> you got stop on there. You got all your little regular, you know, spiritual songs. You know, this is my spiritual hit list. Uh, the Bible says that the word of God dwell in you richly in songs and sins. I got words in my, uh, in, in my heart. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Ah, the, uh, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know.
Uh-uh, you can't tell me that. Uh-uh. You got to, listen, hallelujah. Just because you enter into the new thing, remember what God, the Bible says, don't remove the old landmarks. Amen. There's some landmarks in your life. Amen. What God has done. And I don't care how long, how young you are. There's some landmarks in you guys' lives that you've seen God do stuff in the life of your family. You got to remember that stuff. You got to hold on to that. Amen. Go to the next verse in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. He preached the word unto them, and they came unto him bringing one sick of the palsy, which was carried by four people. Now, this is if you want to have something new in your life. And when they could not come close unto him to press the and cover the roof, touch somebody and say, you have to do things that are unconventional. If you want to experience something new, quit doing the same old thing. Now, they couldn't get through the door. Most people would have said, okay, I guess we need to go home. But see, the Bible says it was four men who said, we're not just accepting the conventional method. We're not just accepting what we can't get to Jesus. And if you read the story, the Bible says, in Jesus seen their faith. See, when you start operating in an unconventional faith, when you start stepping out of your spiritual comfort zone, and you will witness to people and pray with people and talk about Jesus and share the word of God, when you're not just someone who comes to church on Sunday and then Monday through Saturday, you're just doing your thing and Jesus isn't even a part. When you're unconventional and take the roof or the ceiling off of Jesus, just like that one spirit, that one pastor said there was no more room. To receive them. In other words, you got a spirit that, you know what, God is going to do somewhere. It's going to be big. It ain't going to be no more room. The Bible says they, they decided, look, I'm not even going to try to get to Jesus in a conventional way. I'm going to take the ceiling off of my faith and what God can do in my life, what he can do in my church, what he can do in the people that I love, in their lives, in their ministries, in their children. That's why that love gift thing was so important. Oh, yeah. Man, you know, you have to Put a spirit on your children that you are unstoppable. Man, you are gifted. You're talented. You can, you, you can, look, if you want to get a nine to five for the state, go ahead. But you can do way more. Amen. It ain't nothing wrong with a nine to five for the state. Don't get it twisted. I'm not saying that. Hallelujah. All I'm saying is, hallelujah, you got to instill in them that you do not have to set a ceiling on what you're capable of. That's how you enter into new things. Man, new, new things, hallelujah, are like having something way, 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 way far away that you want, but you're not there, but you're willing to remove the limitations of your life and go for it. And every step you take is something new. I watched, I watched Lance's Comedy uh, a career. Matter of fact, you at Lab on Limited tonight, right? Mm -hmm. Amen. What time are you there tonight? Seven. Seven. So, but I remember when last day comedy at the church. Then he stepped up, kept going, something new. Then I remember where it was almost like he was a producer. He he would produce shows, and which was uncommon for somebody who was a new comic. Then I watched how you him just keep going, Prince of the Army, every step was something new. Man, they made a movie now. Amen. Hallelujah. Man, touring. Man, I've been to Japan. Yes. All that started in the church, him talking about me. That's why I was talking about you earlier today. Amen. <laughs> First service, I was talking about you. Amen. Amen. But that all started. Amen. Yeah, that's how people fooled me. They just rushed the Lance out the church like Lance or somebody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Hallelujah. And then here's the last thing. The Bible said they had covered the rug. And broke it up, and they let down who was sick of the palsy. Keep going. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said unto them, Son, thy sins be forgiven. In other words, we can, we, we can create a new dynamic in other people's lives. Amen. See, that's, that's the thing that we have to have a heart for as a church. That we can actually produce something new for other people's lives. That's a powerful, powerful element of being a believer. That you actually have the power to help change someone's life. Amen. 
And you got to walk in that. And when Jesus said, baby, sin and them, son, thy sins are forgiven. Now, this is so important about doing this. But there were certain tribes sitting there, reasoning in their hearts, religious people. Why does this man lie? For God, only God can forgive sin. So, do y'all think that? Do you think only God can forgive sin? And he gave us authority. Go to the next verse. Look what Jesus says. And immediately when Jesus received the spirit that they thought this way, he said, why are you thinking this way in your hearts? Go to the next verse. Whether it is easy to say to the sick of the palsy, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, arise and take it to your bed and walk. Keep going. But that you may know the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the sick of the palsy. Now stop right there. Go back, please. He said the Son of Man. Now, we usually call Jesus the Son of who? God. So why is he saying the son of man here? Relates why, to us. why is he calling himself the son of man? Because he's speaking about his humanity. Amen. And he said as humans, mm -hmm. you have the power to forgive sin. Yeah. And this is the key to newness. Mm -hmm. Go back one verse. Whether it's easier to say the sick of the palsy... Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, take your bed and walk, that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the sick of the palsy, I said to thee, rise up and walk, or receive your healing. This, this is the, if you don't do this, you'll never walk in newness. Say this with me right now. Say, today, today I am walking I am in forgiveness, forgiveness for myself, myself and for you, and, for you. and I am receiving. My healing. My healing. The reason a lot of people don't experience newness is because you won't receive forgiveness and you won't forgive others and you won't receive your healing. Amen. You gotta receive your healing if you want to walk into this. You got to. If you want to experience everything God has for you. You have to make it your mission yeah. that I am not going to live in unforgiveness and being sick. Amen. Amen. I ain't going to do it. God didn't say I have to do it, so I ain't doing it. And there are a lot of people right now that are stuck in places where they cannot experience the new thing God has for them because they won't receive forgiveness and they won't receive their healing. So before we enter into 2020, that's what we got to do today. Everybody in here, we got to receive forgiveness and we got to receive it for others. And I got a whole list of people I have to constantly forgive. Because I find out in my life, I can forgive them on Monday and I'd be mad at them again on Friday. And I have to forgive them again. So that's what I, I live like that. Hallelujah. I live like that. I live like, y'all think I'm playing. I live like that. Because I'm that type of brother that want to hurt you. You do something to me, I'll be going to hurt you. Seriously, I'll be thinking about it. You should pray about it. The Lord said, don't be praying to hurt nobody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, 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 keep that, I keep that list. Right? And, then, and then once I forgive them, then I go down my personal list. Because ain't it funny, y'all? We want to be forgiven, don't want to forgive nobody. So I go down my personal list. Lord, forgive me for that. Forgive me for this. That's how you stay healthy, y'all. And then you don't let that stuff, that old ill sick stuff, get you all bitter. The Bible says by which don't let a root of bitterness spring up by which many become sick. Yes, sir. It's people sick right now because you bitter. Amen. Now you need to let go of that. Yes. What they do to you that you can't get over? Right. Hey. And what I find about the human condition, all of us need help. That person did something to you, but who did something to them? And then if they did it, and whoever did it to him, who did something to the person who did it to them? We can, we can play this game all the way back to Adam. So we gotta walk in mercy and forgiveness. Y'all know what forgiveness is? You know what forgiveness is? Do you need it? 
Or you at an age where you realize that something when you disobey, talk crazy to your mama or your daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Have you done that before, Marley? <laughs> Never. <laughs> Not you, well, Marley. Amen. Hallelujah. But we, we gotta walk in forgiveness. Always never let anybody make you feel so bad about your life that you quit and give up. That's right. Don't ever do that. Never. Never, never. You say, Lord, I was wrong, forgive me. And then when somebody do you wrong, you forget it. And you just walk in your healing. Amen? Amen. Praise God. We, can we receive that today? And we pull up to hear the last thing. Thank you for my forgiveness. Can I receive it? All my life. Say it for my spouse. For my children. For my brothers and sisters in Christ. I receive God's mercy. I receive His grace. Say this. I am coming out of 2019. Into 2020, I am completely whole. I am completely healed. In Jesus' name, say the devil is in trouble. Hey, you dealing with somebody, hallelujah, that's ready to enter into his new thing. In Jesus' name, God got some things for me. And I'm going to get them in Jesus' name. And I'm not going to let unforgiveness and bitterness and sickness, I'm not going to let none of that keep from getting what God has for me. Amen. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand praise. Amen. 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 Father, we thank you today. We praise you for your goodness. We praise you for your mercy on this last worship day of the old year. And we receive the new thing that you have for us. We have cleaned our slate. We have let go of our past, let go of our hurt, our pain, our shame. We have received the wholeness that we need to grab hold of what you have for us and walk in it. So, Father, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Hold on one minute. Hey, this is awesome. We're going into this new year, the Hebrew calendar and numerical system uh, is different than ours, right? So, going into this year for Hebrews, they have picture uh, references for their alph alphabet and for their numbers. So the number, uh, picture number for 20 is an open palm, an open hand. So for 2020 is two open palms, two open hands. And and the the uh, the meaning of 2020 in the alphabet is redemption. So so 2020 is a year of redemption, and God has two open hands for us. And, and the pastor was saying, or pastor was saying, it's so awesome because there is no redemption without forgiveness. God had to forgive us uh, in order to redeem us. And the thing that he used to forgive us was punishing Jesus for us. That's what it took for us to be redeemed. So if God would not spare his own son, amen, he has an open hand, an open palm to each and every one of us. And that's what we got to go to the world with. Uh, we're celebrating 25 years and we made it a point to, to win souls. And we have to go out into the world with this message of redemption. Amen. That God can redeem anything. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Just one more thing. Tuesday night from 6 to 8 for our vision fellowship. Come out. Find out what your church is going to be doing in the new year. And I just want to say this. This is also, someone told me this and I didn't realize this. Not only is 2020 our 25 year church anniversary. And Pastor just want to be sure what our theme and our goal is going to be. But how many of y'all know this is a leap year? So isn't it peculiar that our 25th year church anniversary is in a leap year? It's in a year where God adds a day to the year. And he says it's a year where we, we are going to leap into a whole new time and season as a church body. You're going to leap into that in your family and with your children. So receive it by faith today and be excited about it. Amen. And share it with people and tell people. And let people know they can be healed and blessed and delivered in Jesus' name. We love you guys. Amen. We'll be here Tuesday at 6 for our visit fellowship.